All right, we're going to see if we can get through. We're going to see if we can get through this. We got a lot to cover. Um, first thing I would recommend, if you're a smoker, would be to maybe migrate migrate to the roll-ups during this crisis. They're two one two. Just to let you know. All right. So that being said, we need to talk about the status bar. It is critical. These next uh, few chapters, as we progress, are very, very important. As you see, I have the uh, the project open. I renamed it to Hell. Uploaded it to Dropbox. Posted the link to Facebook. I'm not 100 percent sure if any team member can view it um, or even work within it. Um, but what I did do, well, I was able to synchronize with Central. So I'm not 100 percent sure what's going on. In any event. Gateway servers, you're at the mercy. You're at their mercy, man. You're at their mercy. Hope you catch. Hope you catch a. Uh, hope you can draft. I hope you can draft. I'll be honest. In any event, all right. So, the status bar at the bottom of the user interface provides useful information about selected objects and active tools. When you start a tool, the status bar will display prompts about the next step required of the tool. For example, select an object and start the rotate command. Let's do that. Let's go to the uh, first law power. Let's start the rotate command. I am going to go to architecture. I'm going to draw a model line. A rectangle. I'm going to draw it 20 by 8. And then I'm going to stop. And I'm going to do exactly what the instruction has said. Start the rotate command. The status bar will read click to enter rotate, start ray, or drag or click the rotation center control. What that means is that if I highlighted this, hold that thought. There we go. So now, if I invoke the uh, rotate, if I highlight and invoke the rotate command, you'll notice that the status bar. You can click to enter, rotate start array, or drag or click the rotation center control. So what that's saying is the start ray could be here. So now there you are. And as you rotate, Counterclockwise, you'll notice that the scalar shape, the primitive geometry, will rotate. What that also means, if I undo that, if I click on this and hit tab, it'll select every line segment that's connected to this. And if I rotate it, notice how the base point for the rotation is right here. Click or drag to move center of rotation to new position. Center of rotation. Place. Notice that I could go up to this toolbar now and do that. But what did it just say to you? It said, <laughs> don't do that, stupid. Just do it like this. Instead, that's what it said. <laughs> you understand? It's not too difficult to do. Rotate. Place center of rotation. Well, and you just click away. And there's reasons why you can't select this. By all encompassing, we're going to get into that. I'm not going to go fumble around for settings right now. 
Um, it's default out of the box, and we'll get to that. Now, as you notice, that's not too difficult to do. So, it is also useful when you are using the tab key to toggle between object snap points or when selecting chains of elements, which I just explained to you. Chains of elements. I hovered over. In this work set, I drew a line. It's a model line. And I hit the tab button, and it selected all of the, uh, the chain of elements that are connected to it. Chain blocking. It's chain blocking. If you do some research on that, you'll find I'm not talking out of my ass. And again, I'm, I'm just from Bayonne, New Jersey. I'm no one special. Anyway, I'm going to stop this one and look at it. I'm going to continue on with another one in a couple seconds, or a couple minutes. Let's see how this comes out because I want to uh, really delve into this, but I don't want to wait too long. So I want to just see how the uh, video comes out. I'm not able to um, obviously see myself as I'm recording it until the end. <laughs> and anyway, it has something to do with smoking cigarettes. 